A child is born. A child must use his imagination to bring things to life. A child is then introduced to movies, where he can see these things brought to life on the big screen. The child then grows to be a man-child and can spend $1,300 to bring these characters into real life. To give back to you guys, the Extreme Channel is giving away this giant Goro statue from PCS for our 20,000 sub giveaway. If you want to know how to win this, I'll tell you a little bit later in this video. Hey everyone, really appreciate you tuning in to share this exciting moment with me. This is my most anticipated collectible from Sideshow. That's right, this is the Rancor from Return of the Jedi and it is made by a company called Sideshow Collectibles. This is an unbelievable giant statue of the Rancor. And if you're like me, if you were an 80s child, then you understand the feeling that I have right now. As I said in the intro, you, you know, this was one of my favorite toys I had growing up, but I would not say this is a toy, especially for $1,300. Now, there are some controversial things about this we're gonna talk about in the in-depth review today, but I can just tell you right here, I'm blown away just as you probably are watching this. A little bit of background, if you don't know who this is, as I said, it's a character from Star Wars, specifically the third film that they ever released, or episode six. At the very beginning on Tatooine, they went to Jabba's palace, and this was kind of Jabba's guard dog, pet, whatever you want to call it. And Jabba threw people in there, and Jabba threw people into the Rancor cave that he didn't like or he got pissed off at. Eventually, the Rancor squared off against none other than Luke Skywalker. And Luke Skywalker used the Force to throw a rock, I guess. I would have expected something more anticlimactic, but... But nonetheless, he's a beloved character to all of us Star Wars nuts, especially considering the fact he was only in three minutes of one film. So what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into an in-depth review with the basic categories. We're going to talk about concept. We're going to talk about paint, sculpt, value. Is this worth it? Now, the first category is concept. When we look at concept of the piece, A, is it movie accurate? B, does it tell a story? C, is it badass? Yeah, I just said C. Is it badass? Did you hear that? So it starts off with what I call a sub base. This is a museum style black base. I'm not sure if I like this because to me this really isn't a museum style piece, but it's nothing I'm going to lose sleep over. On top of that, you have a mix of dirt and gravel and mud. You see some skulls from some Gamorrean guards, perhaps. That's what it looks like. Some other bones. So this is assumably in his cave right underneath Jabba's throne, and it's actually done really, really well. So you move up and we have Rancor in what I would consider this to be a museum pose. You have either a museum pose where they're kind of posing for a picture or an action dynamic pose where in the middle of some big action. Obviously for a character this large, you couldn't do an action pose, although he does have a little bit of action you see with his arms moving, with him roaring, which is definitely what you want with Rancor. Uh, we're gonna talk about some design issues and how this was assembled in a second, but this is a classic Rancor and I absolutely love it. You know, a lot of times when we talk about a concept with a statue, we talk about how its presence is very big with the concept. Clearly that's the case here, as it should be, because this character is a very large character. And I can't wait to put him with the rest of the collection. If you want to see what that looks like, make sure to check out the Extreme Channel Instagram and Facebook page. The link is in the description below. I post exclusive photos that aren't shown on YouTube on those platforms. So overall for a concept, if I want a Rancor, I think they nailed it. I think they knocked it out of the park. It's a five out of five to me. It appears very movie accurate and its presence is just awesome. I love every part about this, even though I think they could have gone without this bottom base part. Design, this was probably the most interestingly designed statue I've ever got. If you wanna call it a statue, I'm gonna let you know right now, I think the majority of this is PVC. It is extremely light which is probably a good thing, not only with the price of shipping, but also if you wanna move it around. First, let's take a look at the unboxing and the assembly. It came in two very similar sized boxes that actually arrived in different days. Both of them, they didn't have an art box, but they had an inner cardboard box. Then it had the regular foam. This did have some directions and almost like an art print with it, but here's the idea of the foam. So it really wasn't packed extremely well, but the pieces were packed well. So this had two of the arms, which are gigantic, and you can see they actually connect via screws and nuts. Here's the base, which it was actually packed in upside down. And then here's the other box where it had essentially the body and again, more screws.
So as you saw, incredibly creative way to assemble this. It did leave some seam lines. Let's take a look at those. So, so first here in the arms, a little bit of a seam line, nothing I'm gonna lose sleep over. Same thing with the body right here. One other big design issue that I have is look at the inside of the mouth. Now, while this is 100% movie accurate, you can't see the back of his throat. No switch outs or anything like that. This is what you pay for, this is what you get. Let's measure him. The widest point is probably just under 28 and a half, 29 inches. For exact dimensions, I'd go to Sideshow's website. The deepest part is probably about 19 inches. And then I believe the tallest point is right at about, about 29 inches or so. Now the question is, what scale is he? I'm not sure what they advertised. I would say that honestly, he's probably about one six scale if I had to say so. Now, while I'm not a fan of using a material like PVC, which honestly doesn't mean it's cheaper, it's just a different way to do it, a lot of people don't like the fact that their statues don't have that heavy polystone feel. However, if this was all polystone, first, I don't think there's a way that it could support the weight of the long arms or even the torso on top. Second, I don't see how they would attach it. Magnets certainly wouldn't work, especially if it was that heavier of a weight. So if I'm Sideshow Collectibles, I don't know how they could have done it differently. And to me, in the end, all that matters is what it looks like and there's no breakages. And while we're gonna dive into paint and sculpt in a second, there were no breakages. One worry I do have down here though is this nail is super close to the foot. Take a look. So I actually give Sideshow a lot of props for the design of this piece. I thought there was a lot of ingenuity. I think they thought it out pretty well. So I give them a four out of five on the design. Now let's dive into the paint and sculpt. And there are a few places you can tell that, hey, this is a little bit cheaper material. Take a look. All right, so let's dive in. Overall, like I said, it's, it's pretty impressive, especially for PVC. And that's kind of one of the most important things is to make sure it looks good. Now the uh, sub base here, this black museum style, it's fine. I don't like kind of the glue marks that are left where it meets the rock. I think that's a little bit of a miss, but definitely this is kind of microanalyzing something and nothing I'm gonna lose sleep over, but a little bit sloppy. The rest of this space I think looks fantastic though. Looks like real mud effect uh, with some gravel built in there. You can see some of the bones, definitely a Gamorrean guard uh, right there. And it, it kind of shows you the scale why I think uh, this is one sixth. So I think they did a really nice job. Uh, you know, you have to have such a huge base to house this character and they did a good job not making it look boring and making it flow well with the statue. And even the color variations, the browns and grays still give you a nice color variation to the rain court himself. I think he's a he. Well, herself maybe. So it has these elephant type hooves on the bottom, which is interesting. You never really look at that in the movie. The, I don't even know if they gave you the opportunity to see that. But I love what they did. The variations of the texture and the coloring in his skin looks fantastic. Very elephant-like, uh, very tough skin. And then he has some spikes protruding. Uh, really a mix of just a very old creature. Now, some of the parts you see on it are a little bit more smooth and some of it looks good. Like I think right here on his stomach, I like how there's imperfections in the different shades of the uh, tans and browns they used. And then you have more of that rocky, uh, harder exterior right up here with more spikes coming out that looks good. As you move down the arm, again, I like the, the darker color variation. Uh, it's a little bit darker, um, not on camera, unless you have some big spotlights on there. And I think they did an awesome job with his nails. These long, creepy nails, very thankful nothing got broken in shipping. And even over here. And uh, if you've seen the Facebook page, or the Instagram, I actually posted pictures of how big these arms are. They're about the same size as mine. Now, one part I don't like is, especially on this side right here, you have a few areas where it looks a little cheaper. This is where you can really tell that, hey, this is PVC, which is a type of plastic, um, not your typical plastic you would buy an action figure. Maybe it's the gloss on it, but I'm just not digging that right there. Then where his ears are, are actually holes. Kind of interesting. He has an earring on the other side. I'm kind of jumping down here. I wonder who had to pierce him. Uh, I like how they have the cuff here, you know, insinuating he is a caged creature. And where the chain, it would have been cool if there was kind of a chain that was dragging on the bottom. 
Now on the back, well, unless this is a centerpiece, you won't see that. See it. This is where it's uh, kind of a mix between a turtle. So this shell-like uh, exterior, which covers up the inside of where I assembled it. And then his little tail that I do remember seeing in the movie. So very interesting creature. All the creatures really were in Star Wars. So let's get to the shining uh, star of the show. Move over to his mouth here. So a few things going on, as always. So first, uh, his nostrils are actually above his eyes, which uh, I've never really noticed until staring at this, but like I said, pretty accurate to the creature itself. And then move down to his eyes here. They look great. I really like that deep black color. Gives him that evil aspect that he has. I think they did, a, just like his nails, a great job on the teeth here. They look like enamel. And then the coloring from the black down to almost that translucent white where the yellow is in between. Take a look at his tongue. Uh, has some uh, definite issues I'd go see a doctor about, but I like the moist effect they added. There are a few parts where I wish it would be a little cleaner, like where the tongue meets the bottom. Not really a huge deal. And we already talked about the issues with the, but the, the mouth itself or the portrait, I would say, even from like 12 inches away, just looks fantastic. Sorry, I'm dealing with a work emergency, so my phone keeps ringing. But overall, I think they did a really nice job despite it's really just on this side of the face, that little plasticky feel. And it must be uh, some of the paint, but I think the sculpt is part of it as well. But really good job on, on both fronts. All right, let's start with the sculpt of this piece. So I think it's phenomenally done. I, I think they did a fantastic job. I like the skin. I love the base. I love around the mouth. Uh, specifically to the front of it, where I said there's a little bit of opportunity is right on the sides and on the top. Um, but I still think it's a four out of five. Really impressed with this piece. I think they did a fantastic job. Now regarding paint, my comments are a lot of the same. I think the weak pieces are those side pieces that I talked about, and it may be the material that it's made out of, or maybe it's a combination of the paint and sculpt that I didn't dig so much. But I also give the paint a four out of five, especially on such a large piece. I am really impressed. Now, Sideshow Collectibles made 600 of these, and they were 1300 bucks. so is that worth it? Well, I do know, like, General Giant, I believe, made a Rancor in the past. I know Regal Robot's making one, or they did at one point. Uh, however, I think this is the only one made in this scale in mass quantities. So, if I think of the price of a statue, a typical statue uh, that's maybe one-fourth this size goes for about six, $700. And again, there's three to four statues really within this at $1,300. I don't think that's a bad price point. Uh, however, I do worry about shipping this ever again. Uh, it was packed really well, as you saw. And how big this is, that limits a lot of the audience who's gonna display it. But the material, like I said, is PVC. There's some of those plasticky issues that, that sometimes do bother me. So unfortunately, I think the value is good. I think it's three out of five. I could get my money back, but I don't think it's exceptional. So does it have the X factor? Is it a five out of five statue? You know, that's not a cumulative score if you're new to the channel. That's just, when I look at this, is it badass? Does it draw my attention of the 250 statues I have around me right here? Is he one that people will walk over to? Hell yeah, he is. I think this is a five out of five statue when it comes to the X factor. Very impressive. Like I said, I can't wait to show you guys the photos of what he's gonna look like next to the rest of the collection. So make sure to tune in for that. To win this Goro statue, first thing you gotta do is make sure you've liked this video, you've actually subscribed to the channel, and you've hit that bell notification. Second thing is leave a comment below, and make sure it's a witty, entertaining, or funny comment. Because when we hit 20,000 subscribers, I'm gonna pick a random video, and the comment that has the most likes on it will be the winner of this Goro statue. So make sure your comment is entertaining to others and entertaining to Mr. X. Because if I like it, I'm actually gonna pin it to the tops to help you get more likes. Hey guys, if you're new here, make sure to hit that picture of me to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification for all, drop me a like on your way out, and check out some of these other pieces from Sideshow Collectibles. Really appreciate you watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.